This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guests are Mr. Micah Doan, founder, and Mr. Jonathan Doan, uh, director of Protectors of Paradise. We will be talking about their organization's efforts to educate and raise the awareness of people to help combat illegal dumping, d the destruction of natural and cultural sites, and the protection of plants and animals here in Hawaii. So, <clears throat> we've talked so many times about uh, the environment here on the eyes of Hawaii, but uh, these two gentlemen that Mr. Don, the Dones, I'll call them the Don brothers, Jonathan and and uh, uh, Micah, the the efforts that they do. I've been out there trekking that same area, the West Side. So I call it the Renaissance, West Side Renaissance. And without further ado and prolonging this. Uh, I'm just happy to have them to come on the show on Eyes on Hawaii here at ThinkTech and talk about what's going on on the west side. We'll call it Y and I or many areas, but I'm glad that you're doing it. And uh, I can't begin to tell you, I think there's others will join you because the way you do it now, you're, you're reaching out to people. And uh, it's going to be a hard road, but because uh, people come from outside dumping and whatever. But if we can get them educated, so Mike, thank, thank you, Thanks for Jonathan. Having us. Yeah, thank you for having Alrighty. us on the show. All righty. Yeah. Well, tell us about Protectors of Paradise first of all, and how long you've been in, and are you a nonprofit, and how do people contact you? Let's not lose that before we go and get in deep into this. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having us on the show. Um, my name is Michael Dolan. Aloha. I'm the founder of Protectors of Paradise. Um, we are, in fact, a 501c3 a nonprofit organization. Um, and uh, just a little bit of a brief history about our program. Um, we started maybe about a year ago, and we noticed that, um, I guess, during the increase of visitors, it was kind of like the social media age, as uh, more and more exposure of the Leeward Coast was being um, you know, put out there on social media. More and more visitors were coming down. Um, and we noticed an increase in abusive behavior, whether it be um, trash being left behind by beach goers, illegal dumping, um, people harassing wildlife. Um, we've just seen a major increase in the past, I'd say, five years or so. And, um, you know, we'd go down and whenever we'd visit the area, sometimes we'd talk to the, the one park keeper for that area and it was kind of bad for him in the sense that, you know, on Monday mornings after the weekend, it was like he was just buried in trash and debris. And <clears throat> um, so we decided to maybe, you know, get some watermen together, some people from, you know, the, um, that frequent the area and mm -hmm. that cherish the area to come together and, you know, form a community group to, you know, do our part to assist in what we can, and, uh, whether to be hands-on or whether to just raise awareness and get the word out that, you know, um, we have a beautiful coastline, um, just one of the many beautiful coastlines of Hawaii. And, um, because there's not so much uh, attention and focus on, you know, from the authorities in the state, it's kind of really up to us um, as a community and people to try to police ourselves and um, just do what is right to take care of the, the land and its resources. So mm -hmm. We've been just trying to make efforts in doing that. Yeah, Micah? Oh, John, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael explained a lot, and um, yeah, we just, you know, as growing up um, from our young childhood days, uh, we we went to Maku a lot. We have uh, because of our family ties there, and we've you know feel a, a deep connection to Maku, and um, also just the whole West Side. We enjoy going there and for the beauty of it. So. Um, we just, I guess, over the years, the trash has been piling up, mm -hmm. and um, so I mean, it just takes away from you know the natural beauty that over there that it has. So we just, like Micah said, we're just trying to, along with a lot of other you know community uh, members on that side or wherever on the island, just trying to 
do our part to give back, you know, to Mother Nature, and um, just to uh, just to continue, you know, keeping that restore, uh, the, keeping the beauty and restoring it, so that for the future generations, mm -hmm. our keiki, and um, just so that they can continue to enjoy going down that side. Uh, no. Yeah. This this place call we'll call it the West Side or the West Coast, and some say the negative connotation. But I think by far, in in many of the islands, they call one island the Garden Islands, the Valley Isles. Mm -hmm. But I'm more intrigued and and impressed by the Waianae Coast than pretty much any place because even though it's towering mountains and cathedral valleys and all of that at geological times of informed and the sloughing it's still accessible to people, for, whereas you go to Hawaii Kai side, it's steep cliffs, and not as friendly, not as usable. So the people mm -hmm. are more likely to go to be attracted to that, and as we see now, increase in tourism and some unchecked, uncontrolled visitation, people chasing the dolphins, and it just seems like there's a flurry now. The floodgates open. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when I see Protectors of Paradise, I think you get it. Now, you got it. You're out there investing your time. I know what that's like. What are you getting from assistance from your legislators, or do they recognize you, or have they incorporated you, or seek to help you, or state agencies or city agencies? Well, um, in terms of the state agencies, um, I guess over the years since we put in you know, along with just the koku and help from a lot of other people that put in, in the time and work that the state, in terms of the DLNR, and they have um, supporting, shown us support, you know, mm -hmm. given us aid and support and um, helped us in a lot of ways. Um, in terms of the legislature, or, you know, it's we're trying to that 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 one takes some time you know mm -hmm. there's just so many uh, ongoing issues that you know we work with them and they work with us but it's just we're gonna have to it takes a little more patience and time and uh more communication i guess to do yeah. that yeah, yeah. Well, micah I, I see this as a no-brainer because we given the f fact it's obvious that there's an impact mm -hmm. it's obvious that there's illegal dumping burning of cars dumping of fluids it's clear. Mm -hmm. So the the city and the state should immediately recognize or, and incorporate or befriend you as an entity yeah. that participate, not wait until you go and find your way to their doorstep, because mm -hmm. they do have such grants and they have uh, monies, and it's their interest because they are the ones, our government officials and legislators, actually soliciting greater business and mm -hmm. tourism and whatever. So. You should be, and, and I would vouch for you because I know what big impact it is on practically any turnout in, in the bushes, alongside the roads, potentially becomes an illegal dump site. And we're talking about major uh, dumping of uh, materials and chemicals and paints and glass and batteries and tires. tires. I want to speak to, mm -hmm. I, I think you guys caught someone or someone reported a guy actively dumping tires? Yeah, I believe there was a, uh, and uh, there's a lot of controversy to that. I believe the truck was stolen by an employee and they went and dumped a bunch of tires on the west side, but I think that was handled with HPD and um, and whatnot, but that's just kind of a, a little indication of what goes, what happens there uh, regularly. And um, it's just because, you know, if you go from KRL down onto Kana Point. There's no mm -hmm. uh, residential areas. There's no um, businesses, or uh, you know, everything is just pretty much nature, and, it, and that's what makes it so beautiful. But the the flip side of that is you have nobody monitoring the behavior and whatnot. And um, we've been trying to put the pressure on um, different entities with the city and the state, and we've been um, having a good working relationship with the state parks in the sense that they've been open to um, the feedback that we've been giving them. And I, I honestly believe that they're trying to do what they can. What makes it a tough situation, I think, is that uh, an area in, such as the Leeward Coast, which is, we joke about it in the water, is kind of being the last, the last stand for the local people in the mm -hmm. sense that on the, on the island of Oahu, it seems like 
the Hawaiian culture part of it is being kind of squashed out and it's, to me it seems like the, the leeward side is that last little area left and so that's what kind of intrigued me to try to step up and maybe um, do what we can before it's too late because if people um, look back at what happened up at the North Shore and with the surfing industry and the way that skyrocketed and you now people were making money and mm -hmm. you know off of it and now the North Shore you know if you look at the beachfront Pupukea the land owned out there are, you know, big expensive homes and, um, you know, talking with other watermen in the water, they, they've kind of talked about how they could see that possibly, you know, starting to happen down on the leeward coast. And mm -hmm. if we don't stand up and step up to hey, say, we're going to take the responsibility to take care of the natural resources we have, then in the end, we might not have very much of a, a say or a, a mm -hmm. voice, you know, in it. And um, the hard part is when we've tried to contact our representatives on the, the basic needs, we um, we haven't necessarily gotten the response um, to address those basic needs. And um, there's a lot of um, people that I, I believe have good intentions to, to better the area um, and the coastline, but there are specific pri basic priorities that mm -hmm. we feel that aren't being met. So. And what we can ask people, the more pressure, you know, the community members can put on, you know, the authorities, the, the state, our, le our legislature, to try to, you know, hear their voice as well, and maybe we, you know, might be able to get more response. Speaking of the culture and those things, you have also concerns, and, and you're trying to combat and, and prevent the desecration of, uh, for example, the cave at Makua and the upper cave at Maku and the trespassing. Can you both speak to that real quickly? Yeah, so um, we were actually working with the Department of Defense and HBD um, to try and figure out a way if we could, you know, monitor and enforce people that were trespassing onto, you know, federal property, which is the federal jurisdiction, um, and hiking up to the upper Maku cave, which is known as the Nanawe cave. And, just the, that area, um, from the cultural standpoint, there's a lot of um, cultural artifacts. And, um, you know, I can't specifically say where, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, just from folklore and history and mo'olelo. Um, so it, it seems to me that it's just kind of peculiar that there's not more being done um, to try to protect that area. Mm -hmm. um, people are going up there and it's to me it's simply for an Instagram shot for a social media shot because we'll, we'll watch people go up there and then come right back down mm -hmm. um, nobody's uh, I haven't witnessed anybody going up there for any type of cultural um, practice, you know yeah. practice or whatnot um, mm -hmm. we've witnessed people graffitiing um, up in the cave uh, we've gone up there to clean graffiti and you know when we've got in the cave it's crazy it's like nothing but spray paint in there and it's hard to imagine that hey this is you know, a cultural site mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of times you see on the news somebody desecrated a cultural site and everybody's getting all bent out of shape. Well, you know, these cultural areas are being disrespected on the daily and it's like, it seems like only a few people are, you know, blinking an eye to it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I think it's really important that the city and the state, state agencies do not let this just develop into an all out. Uh, free fall. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been happening on there. Okay, we're going to take a break, hold that thought, and we're going to come back. Uh, Micah and Jonathan Dawn with Protectors of Paradise. Uh, we will take a break. This is Eyes on Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. So try a little more, harder than before. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? Tell me they're making music. 
I can play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. I saw it. Welcome back to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. My guests are Mr. Micah Doan, founder, and Mr. Jonathan Doan, director of Protectors of Paradise. We're talking about their organization's efforts to educate and raise the awareness of people to help combat illegal dumping, the destruction of natural and cultural sites, and the protection of plants and animals of Hawaii. So, Again, thank you for coming and, and sharing because I've been over at Y&I. It, it's a place dear to me. I, I love it. It's just that open country. And I can't say that those are pyramids, the pools, but boy, they sure allow you to dream when you're driving through there and seeing how beautiful and it's mm -hmm. dry. And then on the rainy season, you see the eight and nine waterfalls coming down off of Mount Kaala up in that area. It's just stunning. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Michael, uh, you were telling us about contact. How does one contact you or, okay. or participate in your cleanups? Yeah. And uh, have you? Thank you, Carol. Um, so we are right, currently, uh, we're a fairly, uh, relatively kind of young group. So right now we're on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Uh, you can email us at protectorsofparadise at yahoo.com. And the contact um, number would be 808-469-7333. But uh, we encourage everyone to come and check out our uh, Facebook page and Instagram page to keep um, up to date on the current events and um, upcoming events such as cleanups or any type of outreach events we have. So we're more than uh, happy to have everyone mm -hmm. come along. John? Yeah, um, you can just, like you said, contact us on the Facebook or Instagram. And, um, uh, also, you can contact my, my number is uh, 388. 3936 mm -hmm. uh, for any questions uh, and, and information on ongoing projects that um, you know that we may be participating in or may be aware of you know so or just anyone that yeah. has any um, projects or help that they need yeah. assistance with or um, you know we're here to help to try to just uh, reach out to community members if they're having a, a problem in their you know, neck of the woods, you mm -hmm. know, we've gone to places to help people uh, remove, you know, rubbish from their house if they're going to get evicted, um, you know. Because it's likely that it will end yeah. up on the side exactly. of the road in the canyon, so you're exactly. being proactive, are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whatever we can do, you know, um, there's a lot of good community members out there. Mm -hmm. So as a figure, you know, the best way for everybody to get together, you can move together as one army and get better results. Well, I, again, wine eye is the place for me. I, I, in the afternoon, the colors of the water when the, they're backlit by the sunset. I mean, you see spectacular colors. Just that alone is, is enough cause to preserve it. But there's another thing that is troublesome, the, the harassment of marine mammals, the monk seal, the dolphins. And they come to rest and all. Can you, you have great concerns about that. So can you talk to the public or the viewers out there? What would you like them to do and not to do? Um, I think basic information and education is the, the start, you know, because uh, growing up and going down there and seeing the, the spinner dolphins swimming every day, uh, you know, we had no idea the dynamics of their behavior was going on. We said, well, there's dolphins out there, beautiful. But the, the weird part about it, there wasn't too many people swimming out there. I remember the, the first tour groups that um, used to go out on kayaks from the beach and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, as time went on and through the exposure of social media, now it was cool to get a shot swimming with the dolphins. I started to realize to myself, like, wow, there's a lot of people in the water with these dolphins. Now. So mm -hmm. I started to kind of read up more and do a little bit of research to see, hey, how, how could this affect the dolphins in a negative way? Um, come to find out, um, that, you know, the Hawaiian spinner dolphins are one of the only nocturnal um, dolphins. species of dolphins. Mm -hmm. And so they go offshore and feed at night. And the reason wh uh, why they come to Makua in particular, um, you know, they're at different beaches resting during the daytime, but Makua provides a big sandbar for them, which allows them to kind of have a safe haven in which 
um, that brightness of that sandbar allows them to see predators mm -hmm. uh, coming from a far away. So, um, and less you know, turbid water. Yeah. And, and a little calmer in those bays, especially in Makua. And so, yeah. you know, the, over the years, the, the number of tour boats have increased. And, you know, these tour boats are dropping somewhere between 30 to 50 people right on dolphin pods sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, with all that going on, now there's also an increase of um, people coming from shore to swim with the dolphins. And, mm -hmm. You know, when doing our outreach out there, we get a lot of feedback from people. Like, well, if I don't go swim up to them and chase them, or, then it's not really um, harassing right. them. And um, from what we understand and, you know, talking with different, you know, um, people on the subject that, according to the MMPA or the Marine Mammal Protection Act, that um, any any type of interaction that changes their normal behavior falls under harassment. Mm -hmm. So if I go jump in the water and swim out in an area where I know the dolphins are gonna swim through, if one comes and checks me out, you know, I I, I, I changed his behavior regardless if I think I did or not. Mm -hmm. um, I did, and the more people can. Um, make themselves aware of what they're actually doing um, to these creatures um, and, you know, realize that, hey, I have a choice that I, I can make and am I going to make, you know, the choice to go out there and neglect everything that um, is being demonstrated to me or am I going to just, you know, make the better choice and situations where we tell people where, um, like, uh, a child at night, if you tell them, Hey, let's play video games all night. He might just do that, <laughs> he'll you do know. That, but he won't be able to move. And the next he'll zombie yeah. the next day. So when they go swim with a dolphin, if a little baby dolphin comes and checks them out, and they think they're playing with them, yeah, it might be playing with them. But the fact is, later on that night, that dolphin has to go out, you know, and feed in it. deeper waters and feed, and he has to worry about his fitness and his health. And the mother is not getting the rest because they got to stay up all night and watch their kid because he's playing video games, mm -hmm. now their fitness is not up to par. And just these boats traversing so frequently uh, and so close, the frequency that's given off the sound mm. may have an impact, a, a mere disturbance. So uh, we need to be more considerate of that and, and not, and I think Noah should be a little more aggressive mm -hmm. and, and be more aggressive in posting signs and monitoring and walking and talking along the beaches and patrolling that area. Yeah, I know um, there have been uh, NOAA oil, uh, Office of Law Enforcement Officers that have been frequenting the area mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. and um, we we're able to contact them if it's getting too crazy. Um, they are actually, I believe, in the process of working on a, um, a distance rule in which it probably would be a 50-yard. Um, yeah, well, that's a recommendation, and I think yeah. Noah needs to um, really grow up and strap on the uh, the rules and start to mm -hmm. prosecute people because yeah. you see, if you read their rules, it just says it, the general public thinks it's only it's 50 feet, or you'll get fined and mm -hmm. arrested. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that's just a recommendation. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you know mm -hmm. you have to show. So we shouldn't have to wait yeah. to that kind yeah. of. And this mm -hmm. proliferation of boats and they they have increased. But yeah. another problem that I I know that is very troublesome to you and you guys are working trying to prevent it and clean up is the burning of pallets along the beach. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you, well, I, I believe in every pallet there's something around like two hundred. Nails, nails uh, eight, over 200 nails, something around 280 nails. And what are they thinking? I mean, you, you tonight you go and you pile well, up, you yeah. get the whiskey. You know, I mean, burn. to be honest, yeah. it's something that you know we've you know we've done in the past, um, growing up and young, and a lot of people have done it. In which it's it's a, if you're going to the beach real quick and you need to just go get some firewood, there's places that have oh, pallets. Wow. Now you do know well, that was a confession, so you're going to environmental heaven. <laughs> 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 I wish but, the rest would confess. So it's just a lot of times, like people, and then after, you know, it's, I mean, it seems like common sense, you know, but then, you know, you realize after, yeah, shoot, these, if we ain't picking up these nails, fine, then, you know, what's happening to them? Mm -hmm. And so before, because there wasn't so many people doing it, you know, one pallet fire here or there, I don't think um, too much people, you know, made mm -hmm. noise about it. But now, you know, I went down there a few months ago on a weekend, and it was like a scene from Mad Max. 
Gold Warriors, where wow. the, the entire beach is just Loads big fires. fires. And you got Ooh. eight eight to ten pallets in a fire. And so, like, the next day, you know, we do our cleanup. You come, we walk on the area, and you can feel the warmth, you know. And dig it up. Hey, there's not just pallets, and then there's of lighter fluid cans, there's rubbish, there's people are and just... all like, that gets into the tide pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just and notice a difference, you know, I mean, from the sand, I mean, that that line, you can see the difference between the white line and the, there's that the charcoal, charcoal gray. Oh. It's just extending closer to the ocean, mm -hmm. you know? And it's so, leaching and seeping. Last winter, there was mm -hmm. a huge swell that came in and um, ate away a lot of the sand at Makua Beach and it ate away the sand, but what was still left was the remnants of a fire, and it was just all these rusted nails, just mm. now compact over time, it stuck together as like one. Well, before we we gonna be closing here shortly, but uh, regarding your organization and also uh, any events coming up soon or participation or. Or would you, you, any equipment you're asking for donations or some kind of flatbed truck to haul trash uh, or what, anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, any, any type of donation or help is more than appreciated. You know, for the, the whole first year we were, um, you know, operating, we've been using our own personal vehicles. But uh, as anybody knows, you know, with this wear and tear and it's tough to use your own car to haul away trash and um, hazardous materials. You need a big yeah. car out there. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, flatbed would definitely help yeah. we're in the means to try to find, you know, different types of donations or funds to try to get these types of supplies. But uh, everything we've gotten so far, um, trash bags, we got it from the gloves. States, but um, chainsaws, uh, gloves, um, you know, whatever we, we've tried to acquire our own, so any types of any type of help is more than What it. message would you like to leave the public that's watching this today, real quick? Any, any, any messages, plea that the, you have for the them? The message that I guess I would leave here is that, um, you know, we live in a very, very beautiful state. And uh, unfortunately, there are certain areas that there are just aren't priorities for um, the state or whatever authorities to take care of and manage and so sometimes we have to just take it upon ourselves and um, regardless of what anyone else is doing and just take the initiative on ourselves to be responsible and to realize that hey I I'm coming to these areas I'm having a beautiful connection a relationship with him it has nothing to do with the state uh, this person that person but just between me and nature um, I know how I should be treated and if I could just she takes care of us she we care should of us. take yeah. care of her so Treat the whole island as a sacred, you know, right. sacred area. And if you see right. somebody doing something bad, I mean, you don't have to get into a fight with them, but you could, you know, we've had to learn along the way. Sometimes you can go up with Aloha and tell them, hey, maybe we can try to, I can help you do this mm -hmm. a different way or whatnot. But we we got to work together, I think, as a community because um, that's the only way to, to get any anywhere. Well, I, I really appreciate you guys coming in, and Thank there's you so Thank much. You we haven't even touched the surface here, no. but yeah. I, I definitely i will be willing to help, as uh, always, and we'll keep chugging along. So thank you guys. Thank you. If you're interested in getting on our mailing list, go to thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you for joining me today on Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Jay Fidel, our executive director, and our technical support team, Robert McLean. Ray Sengalan, and Nick Sexton. I'll see you again in two weeks. I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.